Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome back to another Friday training. My name is Kevin Thatcher, the founder and CEO here at Independence Title. And we are bringing back again our national partner, Fidelity. Karen Michaels is going to be our trainer again today for, I believe, what is our fourth or I think our fourth week of our Friday training. Next week, we do have coming up uh, social media. So we're going to be talking about social media, which is one of my favorite topics for those of you that follow me uh, on social media. But it was a short week this week. Th it looks like things are getting back to normal. So we're super excited to bring this week's episode to you. The more uh, time we're going to be getting back out there and showing houses and listing appointments and open houses, we want to make sure you as our clients and our realtor partners and investor partners are as safe as possible. So Karen, thank you so much for joining us today. We appreciate it. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and there's a lot, this presentation is chock full of information. So it may be information overload, but I do have, um, like a lot of the stuff came from National Association of Realtors. Every year they do a sort of, you know, um, study on, what's happening in the real estate market or with realtors in terms of are they feeling safe you know what kind of protection are they using when they're out in the field so i took a bunch of that um and then there's a wealth of other information out there national association of realtors though has a fantastic uh portion of their website geared just towards safety for realtors so if you know you need additional information, great resource. So we'll get started. And I think one of the things, real quick, for people to remember yeah. too, is that you know it only. You know, I used to be a firefighter, so I'm I'm very big into you know friends with firefighters, police officers, and and the one thing I always like to tell people is you're never a victim until you're a victim. Exactly. And that's something that most people really need to realize. It's always going to be it's not me, it's not me, it's not me until it's you, and you're going to be like, well, what happened? And I will tell you, one of my agents. Uh, did send me a message the other day. He was actually on Channel 10 News. He was outside his nine to five job in the back having a cigarette in the alley and he got robbed at gunpoint by uh, two kids. So yeah. whether you're a female, whether you're a male, whether you're an investor, it doesn't matter who's listening here. You can be a victim leaving the supermarket. So these tips are not just for realtors, but it's just in general safety tips to always be aware of, of your surroundings and, and what's going on. Absolutely, because we all get that, you know, I'm in my town, I'm comfortable, it doesn't matter. Um, there's always somebody out there looking for a victim. And so this is kind of talking all about that. So safety tips for realtors. Um, the Department of Labor considers real estate sales and leasing a hazardous occupation. So coming from the government, you know, <laughs> basically real estate scary because of what we're going to talk about and and how you guys um, kind of position yourselves in in things that can get you in you know victims of crime. Um, it's a weird topic to talk about right now though because I know we're not doing like the traditional open houses and showings. I mean I'm, I think a lot of people have started going back to some private showings. Um, so it is a little different, but these are all things once this real estate market gets back to normal and we start doing things a little more normally. Um, these are things to think about. And like Kevin said, really keeping it in your day-to-day -day life in terms of, you know, even coming out of the grocery store. These are important things. So um, here's the percentage of realtors who felt fearful for their personal safety. This is from 2019 from National Association of Realtors. They did a poll and only 33% actually felt some sort of at some time um, afraid that something was going to happen to them. So that's a pretty low percentage, um, considering, like I said, what, you know, what you guys go out and do with the open houses or a private showing or something like that. And the places you do go to some of the situations that caused fears were the open houses, vacant homes or model homes, because you're in it by yourself. And if it's a model home, it may be the only home in a subdivision that's built. Um, properties that were unlocked or unsecured, buyers who refused to meet in public places, and then properties in remote areas. So just this is another graph from 2019 from NAR. 40% of women felt unsafe at some point, which is probably in general life we do. Um, 
men, not so much, 21%. And then you've got, obviously, the urban and suburban areas a little higher in terms of feeling unsafe. Why are real estate agents targets? Obviously, because you work alone for the most part. You're not bringing a crew with you to go do a showing or an open house. Um, and it's easy for potential attackers to know where you are. You advertise your open houses, and then you have scheduled appointments to show homes. So it's, you know, all it does is where's, you know, look on the MLS or look at um, a driving through a neighborhood and you see open house on Sunday, easy peasy. Like I said, you're doing virtual open houses. This isn't really going to be a problem. What you need to worry about then is more cybersecurity. But right now, just think about these things in terms of future, um, future going back to normal, and then also for your own personal safety. So reasons for attacks, number one is money. Uh, most realtors, you know, you guys are dressed to the nines when you're showing houses um, or bringing people out. Um, and you're carrying laptops and things like that. There have been cases of realtors being held hostage for ransom, too. Uh, we're going to go through a couple cases that actually um, are relatively recent. And there is a bunch of them. And if you Google, you know, realtors, um, attacks on realtors, there's a, they're across the board, all kinds of things that have happened. So some of the recent cases, uh, Donna Hetzler showing a home to a manager that was a potential buyer, pulled out a knife and told her to get in the closet. Luckily, she had a concealed carry permit. He sh shot at him and scared him off and saved her own life. Uh, Janice Tis Tils Tisdale was to meet Emilio Maldonado and his banker in a remote suburban community. He showed up alone, attacked her. She managed to survive. Now he's in prison for 60 years. These are all factual cases. You can pull up their names. Beverly Carter targeted because she was a woman that worked alone. She was murdered. Her killer was caught and put in prison. Our La Lando Martinez found dead in his car, shot in the head while parked in front of his listing. Never found his killer. So these are just a couple of cases. And for the most part, like we said, it's targeting people that are alone because mo as um, you know, you've got levels of criminals that are looking for certain targets. Some are, you know, the opportunity knocks. You're walking down the street, you're picked off or whatever it is. But a lot of these people set these up because they know realtor working alone, realtor with a lot of money, realtors, you know, fancy watch, whatever it is, easy um, target. What puts realtors at risk, like we said, working alone? Clients are strangers for the most part. And we're hoping, you know, maybe thinking outside the box with more of this virtual stuff, we're going to see a decline in this. Properties for sale can be located anywhere. You're going to have things out in the sticks. You're going to have things downtown in the city. And open houses are advertised publicly. Keeping yourself safe. So these are just, there's, I, like I said, tons of tips in here. Meeting clients in a public area. Um, obviously, nowadays, I think that's pretty much the standard. If they're not coming to your office the first time, you're hopefully meeting in a public area. You're not meeting at a showing for the first time, and that's how you're going to know them. Um, you know, there's opportunities now to do virtual meetings like GoToMeeting or Zoom, like we're doing here, so you can get some face-to-face -face time virtually before you meet someone in um, at a showing. And then there's some forms and stuff you can have done. Dressing modestly, leaving the Rolex at home, carrying less with you, um, only non-valuable business items. So you don't want your iPad, laptop, things that, you know, they can smash and grab out of your car. Avoid driving alone with new clients. I mean, thankfully, I hate to say it, but we're in coronavirus time and you have to have six feet distance. You don't want anybody in your car. And then making sure someone knows where you all are at all times, whether it's a family member, friend, you, someone in the office, you know, keeping in touch and keeping track. And we're going to talk about some of the different tech um like smart uh, phone apps and things that you can download that will help you do all of these things. So proactive safety measures, not being too public. So using your office address or no address at all because you don't need someone, you know, stalking you either. Then consider advertising without your photo. I know that your face is your fortune. Um, but, you know, thinking about maybe switching to a logo or something like that. I have a realtor friend here in the Orlando area. She has a pineapple. It's a really cute little, it's a black and white pineapple thing, but everyone knows who it is. I don't know what she looks like, but I mean, 
in terms of if I didn't know her, but it, because you don't see her photo anywhere, it's just, and everyone knows her brand and everyone knows that that's Amy. Um, and so that's the way she, one way she keeps herself safe. Creating an office distress code, secret word or phrase. So, you know, if you're able to call, hey, can you get me the red file that gives an indication that you are in trouble or getting, finding an excuse to get out of a situation. I left something in my car, you know, anything you can do. I think um, you have to be crafty about it. Obviously, you don't want to get yourself in the situation in the first place, but you need to have an exit strategy at all times. Safety at the destination. So when you arrive at the destination, and this is going to apply not just to even your showings. This should be in your everyday life. Um, I grew up in Detroit, so <laughs> I've got a much different perspective. Um, and I live in Orlando, and so it's like, yeah, I've got city living down. Um, but even I get complacent if I'm running up to Target or something. And I have to stop and remind myself, like, when you get pull up, you know, what's going on around you? Who are those people standing over there? What are they doing? You want to park in a well-lit, visible location. Um, and can you be blocked in the driveway by another vehicle? Can you be blocked in a parking spot by another vehicle? Whatever it is, people, you know, can you pull through? These are all things that I don't know if it's just a lot of it has to do with also being a woman that we're like more in tune to it. But these are things you need to think about. It's always being cognizant of where you are. It's, it's called situational awareness. And we're going to go through that a little later. And as you walk towards your destination, checking out potential risks. Are people coming and going? Is it unusually quiet? Gut instincts, man. If it smells funny, it is going to be weird. Do you observe any obstacles or hiding places in the parking lot or along the street? You know, once again, are there, you know, pillars, bushes, things that, you know, even block the front door that might, you know, raise a red flag like, ooh, someone could be hiding in it. Is anyone loitering in the area? Because like I said, you're going to have opportunists that see you walking in alone with a briefcase and boom. Can, they'll, they can mug you at the very least. Then as you're entering your destination, pausing and looking around, does anything seem out of place? Is anyone present who shouldn't be there who, who isn't expected? And then planning an escape route. Um, I think that's one of those things, even like, you know, at a restaurant, wherever you do, we have mass shootings in this country, which is terrible. But when you go to a restaurant, church, whatever, you should always know where that exit is and how to get out and always think about it. I know it's like uh, paranoia. You don't ever think of it like that. You have to be prepared. We live in a crazy world right now. So some safety tips. Just, you know, these, there's a ton of them. And if you Google this, you are going to get article after article after article. So I've kind of pulled the top ones, um, showing properties during daylight. You know, thankfully, you know, if you can do virtual showings, you can show them whenever. Um, maybe saving that, you know, I only do private showings up until 5 p.m. We can do virtual showings after that. Never turning your uh, back on a client when showing a property buddying up like if you can bring somebody great um i have another realtor friend that um if she's showing properties at night her husband drives her to the showing uh they meet the person there and then he'll wait in the car for her to um come out and give her like a 10 minute time frame before he will go in and check on her um tuning into details when something is wrong you guys have seen it all i mean your realtors We've all been, you know, you've met some, I'm sure, people that you're just like, mm, not sure about. Go with your gut instinct on that. Forget politeness if you feel something is off. I can't stress that enough. I think, um, you know, we unfortunately work in a customer service driven industry. And, you know, we absolutely do not want to offend anyone, but it's your life at the end of the day. And especially when we're talking, we're going to talk a little bit about some of the coronavirus stuff. I mean, asking people questions like, hey, have you been sick? <laughs> is not, it's not offensive. And if they do get offended, truthfully, do you want to do business with someone that's going to be upset about you asking something that's going to protect your life, your family's life, and then making use of technology? Have a second meeting only policy for private showings because you've already met them or you've gotten information from them. Make sure someone always knows your location keeping control of keys to the property at all times, have emergency roadside equipment in case you break down. I mean, that's 
across the board, everyone should have that, you know, flares, whatever. They have little kits. Um, uh, having AAA on standby or whoever you use to uh, if, with your auto insurance. And then take your own car to a meeting, which I think we all do anyway now. Don't leave your belongings unattended in an open house or in your office. Once again, that's across the board. You don't ever, don't leave like your laptop in your, in your car either. You want to keep it down to a minimum of what you're bringing with you. And this is so important right now, just because you work in an upscale neighborhood, don't assume you are secure. Criminals target upscale neighborhoods because that's where the money is. Um, you know, we all think, yeah, the cops might get there a little quicker <laughs> in an upscale neighborhood, but the fact of the matter is you've already become a victim. And it happens time and time again. That's where that complacency is. Um, I live near Winter Park. You think nothing happens in Winter Park. I mean, there is all kinds of crazy stuff that happens up there because that's where the criminals are targeting. And they have a phenomenal police force. Uh, sharing calendars and schedules with colleagues and supervisors. Have a checkout employee board at your office talking about your name, where you are going to be, times, all of that. And then really another really important thing, and this is across, any anytime you're a victim of anything, report it um, or report suspicious incidents because that's going to help somebody else and protect them from maybe uh, being a victim of a crime in the future. Whether it's cyber crime, you know, we've got all this fraud going on right now um, because of the coronavirus and in terms of cyber fraud and all of the, anytime you become a victim, you report it to whatever authority. What that does is whoever you're reporting it to, let's say like the FBI, the police force, they're pulling that information together and then alerts go out to the rest of the, um, the world. So important to always report things. Pre-programming your um, uh, important phone numbers, 911, roadside assistance, all of that. Describing the listing, never say that it's vacant. You do, oh, and then we've got these. These are through National Association of Realtors. Utilizing an agent itinerary form and prospect identification form. So here's an agent itinerary form. This is, you know, you leave at the office, the agent, your customer client's names, their personal identification form, which I'll go through next. Um, all of the, you know, when are you coming back to the office? Your phone number while showing the property. Make sure your phone is charged. Fill this out. So time is of the essence in these situations. Important to make sure the form is complete and accurate. Let your office know if you've changed anything. Um, if your buyer's in the office, or you know, even if you're doing it over a go-to meeting, make sure that they know you're filling it out and that somebody at your office has it with that itinerary information. Because at that point, they know that people know that they're, they're waiting in, um, for you or they have their eyes out for you. Here's the prospect identification form. Once again, you know, if somebody doesn't want to fill it out, maybe question if, you know, you want to do business with them because you're protecting yourself. So here you have, um, you know, this is non-public personal information, so it has to be kept secure and all of that. So it says right up here, form is to be kept in branch office. It's all confidential. You're going to fill out, you know, uh, or they'll fill out their name, address, all of their information, in from out of town, yes or no, where are they from, local address, um, who their employer is, what type of car they have, make, model, color, um, license number, all of that. You get a copy of their photo, copy of their driver's license or photo ID. And this is all, you know, just to protect yourself. So if something happens, they at least have some information on the person. Um, so this form tells who your client is, but can be used by law, enfor law enforcement officials to find a possible perpetrator if you are victimized. So that's why you want to get that information. If people don't want to show you their ID, that's a red flag. You know, why not? They should have an ID. You ask for an ID for everything. You ask that for an ID for, to buy liquor. You ask for an ID to get, you know, to rent a car. You ask for an ID to go through airport security. It's the same thing for you. It's for security. And that's what you would explain to somebody. So those are two types of forms. Those are through National Association of Realtors. Um, good idea to start using them if you haven't. So weapons, because the one woman, uh, Donna, in our 
examples, you know, she actually had a concealed weapon. Um, what other weapons are out there that you can use? Pepper spray is 18% of realtors use them. Firearms are the next pocket knife, taser, um, battery operated nose, noise maker. I will say with pepper spray, be careful with it. If you're spraying it, make sure the wind is not blowing in your direction because that is really painful. 44% of realtors carry some sort of protection. So that you've got 33% that say they're feel fearful, but 44% are carrying protection. So maybe that's why they're not as fearful. But it's important to whatever you're using, whether it's pepper spray, whether it's a gun, whether it's a knife, you know how to use it. You know, there are courses you can take. Obviously with the gun you wanna carry and conceal um, license, you don't just want to get a gun and put it in your back pocket. That's not good if you get, you know, pulled over by the police. If you have a license, it makes it a lot easier. Getting proper trainings and certif certifications, um, getting repeated training, practicing constantly, even with pepper spray, just knowing like how to, you know, because it's going to have a little latch. Can you flip that open? Um, or knowing how to handle your weapon under extreme stress. Excuse me because that's gonna be the thing. If you're freaked out that you might spray yourself in your face or you might taser yourself. Those are the kinds of things that you need. There are um, a lot of self-defense classes out there that are taught by like private instructors. They can show you how to use whatever you want to use, um, whether it's pepper spray, whether it's a pocket knife, whatever. So think about those things. If you're considering protecting yourself with one of these, how are you going to do it? And are you prepared to do it? You know, just don't throw a pepper spray in your purse and be like, I'll find and try and find it. No, carry it with you, have it someplace. Safety training. So the local real estate association, police departments, community centers all have potential safety trainings. Like I said, there's private instructors out there that will do like group trainings, Google their names. You can do see them on Yelp reviews and all of that. Um, and it's a great thing. I have a friend that teaches in Orlando. She'll just do small groups and um, for personal safety. And it's everything from like just being aware of what we're talking about to actual, you know, self-defense moves that you can use. Investing in some self-defense classes, Krav Maga, Jiu Jitsu, um, you know, whatever you're interested in doing. Uh, maybe even just doing a self-defense class, like I said, as, as opposed to, you know, obviously these are going to get you in great shape. So situational awareness, what is it? Perception of environmental elements and events with respect to time or space, the comprehension of their meaning and the projection of their future status. It's being aware of where you are, what's going on around you. Avoiding places or scenes where trouble may lie. Um, like Kevin was saying, his friend's out smoking a cigarette in the alley and, and gets um, mugged. You know, is it dark out? Where are you? Are you in a parking garage by yourself? There are so many places where you have to be heightened awareness and it's just talking on your cell phone and walking through a parking garage it's, you're just a sitting duck. You know, you have to be cognizant of where you're going. Um, it's always easier to prevent an issue from developing than it is to take matters into your own hands. And that's the honest to God truth. You know, one of the things, um, we all spend so much time looking at our phones and walking around and we're not, have, we don't have a clue of anyone around us. You know, if you become a victim and they ask you to identify them, you're not going to be able to because you're looking at your phone and it happens to tons of people. You see people get hit by cars because they're looking at their phone and they're walking. So things to just think about, you know, head up. We were, ta we're taught as women, you know, in self-defense, it's like you stand straight, you, you know, you, you, um, you make eye contact with people, you and you get that, you know, you should smile more often. No, you shouldn't smile more often. You have to be aware and you have to be strong and you have to exude confidence. And that's another thing that falls within situational awareness. You need to let everyone know, I see you, I know what you're doing, and this is what's happening. Um, and that's one way to really kind of make yourself uh not so much a target. If your head's down, you're digging through your, you know, purse, your briefcase, whatever, you're not paying attention. And that's all it comes down to. And Kevin can probably attest to this 
you know, how many crimes are committed just based on someone not paying attention. So safety at open houses. So we have virtual open houses right now, but like I said, when they, we go back to this, the uh, good old days when we do actual open houses, if that happens, then you're going to take a fellow agent or lender or inspector, have someone come with you. Title companies, I mean, Kevin, you know, maybe he has a staff member that wants to come help out. Um, requiring all visitors to sign in with valid ID and email. Notifying someone that you'll be calling in every hour on the hour. Never leading a visitor into a room. Never turn your back on anybody when you're showing them a house or leading them into a room. And then mentally plan potential escape routes. Once again, wherever you are in life, you should be planning escape routes. If you plan to exit in a backyard, make sure you can get out of the yard. So looking for fences, pools, landscaping, anything that can block your path. Make sure your cell phone is charged and you know, you're know you not charging it at the house. Charge it before you go there because if you are charging at the house, it means it's not with you. Um, and then avoiding attics and basements. Don't assume everyone has left the premises. You want to check all the rooms, backyards, all of that. Have your sellers double check everything is secure too. You're the last one at the open house. Make a phone call as you walk to your car. Salients are less willing to attack you if you are on a phone call, which that's surprising to me. Safety while showing homes. Every item listed in the safety at, safety at open house section, um, same thing. You want to go through all of those. Then you want to hold your first time meetings in a public place, um, let colleagues meet and vet potential clients with you. So that's another thing. If you've got, you're meeting somebody you've never met before, your colleague, you introduce your colleague and they get a weird feeling, maybe talk about it. Why, what, what gives you that feeling in case your gut instincts off. And then you want to complete the prospect identification form, which was the form I showed you previously. <clears throat> Excuse me. So let's talk about, I've given you some forms, some ideas for open houses. Now let's talk about what's happening now with COVID-19 because there's additional things you want to ask. And this all goes back to personal safety. It may not be criminal, but at the end of the day, you were trying to avoid you getting sick too. Um, and the coronavirus is no laughing matter. I mean, people, we have 100,000 deaths in the U.S. now. Um, Florida's one of the largest states with the amount of people that are ill. So we need to protect ourselves from that. Um, this is through National Notary Association. I know other brokers have, or different brokers have their own form of questionnaire. Um, but this is like, if you're doing a private showing, you want to ask these questions of your buyer and seller to find out if they're sick or if they've been around somebody. And it's all to limit the risk of exposure to you, your family, your friends. So you'd have, um, and you can use any form, but this is just a simple one. Like it says, you know, we have concern of a COVID-19, trying to risk or limit the risk of exposure. Here's the self-declaration by borrower, whoever you want it signed. No one's returned from international travel within the last 14 days, because as we all know, 14 days is the quarantine period if you've traveled, and it's not even international travel. I think they're quarant my friend was saying they quarantined her um, friend that came in from New York. So just know 14 days, have you traveled anywhere, especially on a plane? Uh, have you or household family members been in contact with someone who has COVID-19 in the past 14 days, or have you exhibited any symptoms? If they mark yes, then that's a, you know, maybe we switch these things all over to virtual showings and go to meetings or whatever it is they want to do. Um, once again, to protect yourself. There's also uh, Florida Realtors created this COVID-19 in-person access acknowledgement for people that do want private showings. You want to, and the, the seller signs one and then the buyer signs their own. And basically it just says, we accept the risk that yes, I don't want a virtual showing. I, I, me as, potential buyer. I want to go in the house and I understand there's a serious um, virus out there and, you know, we're mitigating the risk. Um, or I'm letting the realtor know that I understand all of this. I'm not sick, anything like that. And the seller agrees that people are coming in their house and that, you know, the potential that someone might have COVID-19 in their house, they're, they're accepting that risk. You know, this isn't going to get you out of maybe a uh, 
legal issue if you know someone has COVID-19, but you're protecting yourself once again. That says I'm you are accepting the responsibilities by your and seller that you want to go into these houses. So here's a copy of the form. You can see there's an assumption of risk. Owner signs one, prospect signs one. Um, the owner can sign one once for all the for anyone coming in prospect can sign one for any listing they're going to. So Florida Realtors form library, if you want to um, look at something like that. Safety while showing model homes, same thing, have a guest register, you know, their name, address, phone number, email, vehicle info. I don't know if you guys have it. Um, there's a great app. So if you're doing a showing, you know, have them fill it out beforehand. But even if you're doing, um, like an open house and you want them to fill out a register, there's a thing, there's a ton of apps, but this one's called CAM Scanner, C-A-M Scanner. And it, you take a photo of whatever document, it goes, it turns it into a PDF and you can email it immediately. It's fantastic. So I know there's a bunch of different ones. I use CAM Scanner. Um, that way, you know, someone comes in, they're, you're sharing an open house, you click the information get a copy of their photo ID, send it over to your office or whomever, so at least they have it. Rural areas, don't assume your cell phone will work. You want to check prior to be sure your phone is serviceable in that area. Bring printed maps in case GPS isn't available. That's, you know, pretty important. I know no one likes to print out the MapQuest maps, but, you know, you get into some place where satellite's not available. We live in Florida. You know, we get a bad thunderstorm. You might not have satellite access. Um, things to think about. Cell boosters to increase signal strength. Have a check-in buddy again. Should have a check-in buddy probably with anything. Just, you know, figure out the time length. National Association of Realtors has a realtor safety network. They launched it in March of 2019. So you can... Uh, submit incident reports online. They use it to send out alerts. Um, hashtag Realtor Safety Network. It's under the National Association of Realtors.org. Well, I think it's NAR.org, right? Uh, uh, backslash safety and educates members about common dangers of the field. That's where I've got those two forms, the um, prospect information form and the agent itinerary form they have a bunch of information on there you know i know it seems like overkill like i know i like i said you're like ah, you're from detroit you're paranoid i'm like no it's it's so vitally important to just take that proactive measure to protect yourself tech tools so 53 percent of members use a smartphone safety app to track whereabouts and alert colleagues in case of emergency that's up from 47 percent in 2018 so this is the 2019 numbers uh, number one is find my iphone feature and then you have some other ones and these are some tech tools i i you know have not tried them these were just recommended um through nar and they have a whole list of them so i just threw out a couple of them this trust stamp this is a nar tool the Realtor sends links to potential clients to create a profile, provide official ID, and any other social account for vetting. So you're getting to know people through their social media account. Are they valid? Listen, we all know about catfishing. There's that whole show on it. But, you know, if you can find, if someone's filling this out, you and you can find social media accounts on them, and you can see what they're about, and they're an actual human being, might make you feel a little better. Guard Llama is a key fob safety alert device. Ripple safety, tiny wearable safety device linked to 24 seven monitoring system. And there's a gazillion of these out there that you just press the button and it goes to, like you have an alarm system for your house. Hey, Karen. Yeah. One, yeah. So just, just sorry, I didn't want to, I just wanted to talk about something real quick on this. So yeah. a lot of our investors uh, pay for a subscription. It's very small. I think it's like $20 a month for a web app called Forewarn, F-O-R-E-W-A-R-N. You can basically put in a phone number and it pulls a full background check on people. You'd be, it would blow your mind if you saw the stuff that comes up just linked to a phone number or an email address or a name. So it does like, um, it'll check public record. It, check, it checks a whole bunch of stuff. So that's just another one people can look at. I've seen the demo on it. I don't really use it, but they use it a lot for skip tracing and stuff. Uh, and you can get a lot of information. So forewarn.com is the website. Perfect, I'm gonna write that down actually too. Um, yeah, I mean, there's, like I said, there's a ton of them and, you know, don't just, 
pull one up and be like, oh, that's good. These are all, I mean, National Association of Realtors has a whole list and this is from their list. So they're the one, they've already vetted a lot of these, but forewarn, yeah, that sounds fantastic because yeah, if you can find a criminal record on someone right away, um, even better. So you've got Silent Beacon, these are all apps, um, Agents Armor, Be Safe, Central X, Centra Smart. So Silent Beacon, you have, uh, sends alerts to emergency contact and IDs your location for 911. You know, you hit the app, you're good to go. Agents Armor alerts your broker, emergency contacts everyone um, for check-in during the meeting. Be safe, involves a timer which generates an alarm if user has not checked in. You got Centra Smart, used to open locks, box alerts, um, alerts agents, emergency contacts when agent doesn't and can't confirm safety. So tons of them here's additional apps we're safe people smart these like i said are all coming from um the national association of realtors and i see somebody repeat that website please i he said forewarn it's yeah. f-o-r-e-w-a-r-n dot yes. com forewarn.com it's twenty dollars a month no commitment uh and and like i said it does a nationwide criminal check and a bunch of other stuff. I mean, you could literally plug in a name or phone number and it brings up tons of information. Awesome. And then warrants, yes, we are, the copy of this presentation is, um, I'll send over to Kevin and he'll send it on to all of you guys. Uh, yeah, lots of info in here. And all of our presentations are on our YouTube channel. Uh, they're all on there, they're on our Facebook page. So you can go visit any of our social media sites and everyone has streamed live on there and it's saved. Awesome, thank you. Um, let's see, oops. So just in summary, uh, this, you know, you wanna keep communication open, let everyone know where you are. Um, I know as adults, we're like used to being independent, doing our own thing, but especially when you're going to do a showing or an open house, it's just, you know, this is where I'm going, this is the time frame you know, have some, you know, be able to have someone check in on you. Taking charge of your schedule, you know, what hours, you list those on your social media page, let it be known right away that I'm not, I don't do 8 p.m. showings. Um, and it's hard because people work nine to five, like I said, but you can be like, hey, after seven o'clock, we do virtual showings, you know, and if they're, whatever time frame it is that you want to set up and being out in daylight is, you know, once again, you're, mitigating uh, your risk of any sort of being victim of an attack. Settle open house apprehension before communicate with your coworkers, the open house dates and hours during keeping a close eye on who's coming and going after not assuming the house is empty and going to check everything. Uh, pre uh, practice care for careful car precautions. Keep your gas at least half full you know, maintain it, get your oil changed, get your tires checked, all of that stuff that, you know, we all hate doing because it's time consuming, but, you know, for your protection, if, especially if you're going out to remote areas, you know, or you're traveling on, you know, more deserted roads. I mean, good God, you can be an alligator alley and break down, you know, cars will be flying past you. That's not a very busy freeway. I mean, 95, you might be okay, but even then, so just, you know, being cognizant of that and then be prepared, you know, pepper spray, whistle, taser, whatever it is. Can't stress enough. If you are going to use some sort of um, weapon type protection, you know how to use it. You understand, you know, if you need a license, you get a license. Um, it amazes me how, how they let you get a concealed weapons license and you don't even have to fire a firearm it's crazy right right i mean you can go to what is it um bass pro shop i mean there's a bunch of shooting rates but i'd like but bass pro shop has a whole shooting thing that you can go practice um and you should practice you should know how to shoot a gun if you have one <laughs> you know and know on the whole gun safety it's and that's also for your own protection too i mean you don't want to keep a loaded gun laying around your house either you need to be smart about it and that's what all those classes will hopefully teach you. Make your meetings matter. You wanna set up the initial meeting in a public place and don't forget to ask for a form of identification to verify their identity. That personal identification form, you know, at least that form's filled out, you save it at the office. Um, 
with a copy of their photo ID. And like I said, if somebody doesn't want to give you something or someone doesn't want to answer a question like that, that's a pretty big red flag. Something's not right. Additional resources for you. Here's that NARDOT Realtor uh, safety site. And then FloridaRealtors.org has a ton of information as well. So um, there is, I think, yeah, NAR is probably the best place, but there's also, you know, you can Google pretty much everything. There's, there's blogs and articles and all this stuff on the safety piece. Um, you know, the other piece is like cyber fraud security, and that's a whole nother class. But, you know, just being aware of, you know, what links you're clicking and all kinds of things to protect your personal identification or personal information. But in terms of going out and meeting people, I mean, you guys are on the front line of this. Um, and it's just being cognizant and being proactive and really paying attention to your surroundings and not just, you know, while you're doing your job, but pretty much everywhere. Um, we live in crazy times, like I said, so just be smart and hopefully you will be safe. And I think that is it for me. Um, does anyone have any questions, comments? You will get a copy of this presentation and like Kevin said, it's on his Facebook, Instagram, all kinds of things, it's out there. Yeah, we so put it everywhere. So lots of good info. Um, Kevin, do you have anything you want to add? No, I, obviously thank you so much again for taking the time on a Friday. I know it's, uh, you know, it, it's late in the week and, and it's, you know, we found that Fridays as much as most people don't want to do it, most of the people on here, we're getting our largest attendance and our largest RSVPs um, for, for these short, quick, you know, 30 to 45 minute uh, training. So I, I do appreciate you coming on. I know we have one more week next week where we're going to be doing um, social media. For those of you that did not see our interview on Wednesday, we're, we'll put it on YouTube, but it's also on our Facebook page with Patrick Bet David, uh, who is an entrepreneurial trainer. He's like the Tony Robbins for business. Um, but to a whole nother level, he has like 5 million followers on social media uh, and, and tons of content to help uh, entrepreneurs, solopreneurs, uh, intrapreneurs to just be as successful as possible. So please, if you're listening to this, go check out that video uh, from Wednesday. It was uh, our best one yet. And uh, that's really it. And, you know, we're going to bring some more value next week. We have a few more interviews lined up and our training next week. And from what we're seeing, where we seem to be coming out of the COVID-19 crisis, things are starting to loosen up a little bit. Hopefully everyone follows proper safety and, and uh, health measures to make sure we don't have a, a second wave and get shut back down. But uh, it's all about everyone, you know, working smart and staying safe. Absolutely. Well, thank you, everyone, and thank you, Kevin, and we'll talk next week. Absolutely. Thank you, everyone. Have a great weekend, and we will see you next week. Feel free to email me or call me with any questions. We're here to answer them for you. Have a great weekend. Take care.